Hello, my name is Julia Marie Black. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm one of the co-founders of Disruptive Compassion. We gave four teams 24 hours to write, direct, perform, or choreograph an original piece of their choosing revolving around the theme, fight or flight. We would like to thank all of the incredible performers and creators that came together to make this happen. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Disruptive Compassion's first 24-hour play festival. I always thought panic attacks are like what happened in cartoons. You pull out your paper bag, you breathe. I mean, we can try that if you want. Eric, what's happening to me? You said it yourself, you're having a panic attack. Hey, but why? Oh shit, I, I can't fucking breathe. Don't focus on the feeling, okay? Um, it'll only make it worse. You're not listening. Why is this happening? Sometimes there isn't a reason, okay? Why are you so nonchalant about this? Cass, I've done this shit before. You fail to realize that this is the reality for some, a lot of people. This isn't a revolutionary experience. You're not the first and you won't be the last. Now take your head out of your fucking ass and just let it go. Just let it go. For some anxiety veteran, you don't have much insight. You baby yourself too much. What? I don't know what else to tell you. This coddling isn't helping anything. I feel like I'm in some mode. Fight or flight? Mm-hmm. I keep trying to tell you, I've been in your shoes before. Then why aren't you helping? <laughs> hmm. What would you do if the roles are reversed? No. Exactly. And the roles have been reversed. You never do jack shit. You just sit there on your phone pretending not to notice. And it's so obvious that you've never dealt with this and that shit before. Look at you now. Nothing has even happened to you and you're getting worked up. I don't know what you've, I don't know how you made it this far, to be frankly honest. Why are you being so mean to me? I'm just telling you what you don't want to hear. Everyone's thinking this, Cass. I have never met someone with less empathy than you. It's fucking ironic. You're giving me a lecture on empathy right now. Look, I could tell you to breathe. I could make you use all five senses to distract yourself. I could tell you that everything is gonna be okay, but what will that do for you in the long run? You'll just forget the whole ordeal happened. Maybe now, maybe now, you'll finally fucking get it. The world doesn't revolve around you, Cass. I'm sorry, but it's true. It doesn't. I'm sorry. You have to deal with this. Deal with what? You? No. This feeling... Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry too. How do you cope? Um, you 
just let it go? Uh, no, no. But uh, really, it's you figure it out as you go. It really is just a fleeting feeling, like most things that'll pass. You're so matter of fact about this. <laughs> well, yeah. I've had to self suit for a while now. I, I like to think I've mastered this, this, this mode. That's a nice pillow you've got there. Um, <laughs> what is it, Pat Satin? Cotton. I know what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Feeling better? Yes. Uh, how are you feeling? You know, that's the first time you ever asked me that. You're joking. No, I'm not. Oh. I'm good though. That's good, Derek. <laughs> I'm really glad.
don't get me wrong, I was way in over my head. Putting a down payment on a pillow fort? The mortgage was unheard of, too. The point is, I was now the owner of the first legal residential pillow fort. The government said it was okay, and you gotta trust the government, right? Wrong. <laughs> In less than a week, I was swarmed. Family, friends, strangers. All after one thing and one thing only. My pillow fort. It changes people having something that desirable. I can hear them now. I'm worried about you, honey. What if there's a storm? Sorry, sir, I don't have any change. All pathetic attempts to coax me from my home. <laughs> I tell you, people change. And since they were changing, I decided to change a little myself. I was the boss now. The man, the head honcho. Everything was right there in front of me, and all I had to do was take it. <sighs> but they didn't understand. The dominance of my supreme living establishment was too much for them to handle. My boss felt so inferior she had to fire me just to save her own skin from the heat. <laughs> I tell you, out of everyone, I thought my husband would get it. He always does. From Raymour and Flanagan's to Bed Bath and Beyond, he stuck by my side. He always understood, but this, it was too much for him. I was too much for him. In my new superior form, he barely recognized me. I was the owner of the most prized possession in the world. I was the first daring adventurer conquering the new frontier, but all he could say was, just let it go. You can't expect us to live like this. I love you, but please stop. So I did. If you're watching, Jared, I did it for you. The fort is gone and uh, I'd like to give you the piece of my heart that lived inside it. I was able to salvage it during the demolition. It's all I have left and it's yours if you want it. Batshit Crazy by Joseph Marciniak. Open in the living room, 3 a.m., dead silence. Suddenly, Georgie runs out of the room screaming and turns on the lights. Lights up. Oh, fuck. 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 Bev! Get in here! Bev! Bev! Exits the room with a baseball bat in a panic. Who is it? Who do I have to kill? It's not a who, Bev, it's a what. Because there is a bat in my room. Oh my god. You woke me up for a little bat? Bro, it's 3 a.m. I thought we were getting robbed or something. You know I am too afraid of those things to deal with it myself. I just ran. Why didn't you just go to the covers? Bev, I am a 24-year-old fan. Covers don't make me feel safe anymore. But I do... That's hot. Yes, you do. Thank you very much. Regardless, my blanket doesn't actually cover my feet, so I couldn't even cover myself fully if I wanted to. Uh, why didn't you just kick it, then? Uh, might as well with your little toesies out in the cold. Uh, real funny. Just get in there and deal with it, will you? How big is it? Uh, like, give me a rough size estimate. Bev, are you trying to stall going in there to kill this bat? Yes, I am. I don't even have the tools anyways. Something my dad and I used to do if a bat flew around our house is use a big bin to catch it and then cover the bin and then let it fly free. Uh, believe it or not, I'm partial to letting things live. So we need a bin is what you're saying. There's the smart Georgie we all know and love. We could grab the one in my room? 
It appears the smart Georgia we all know and love has left the room. What are you talking about? It's 3 a.m. and I cannot get your jokes right now. The bin is in your room. Where our little bat friend is? Yeah, but we can, like, run in there and, and grab it, can't we? Oh. Okay. It works for me. After you. Jesus Christ. Bev, can you just find a way to deal with the thing? Yeah, genius. Just let me find something to put it in. Stay put. Bev exits into their room. Hurry back, please. I can hear it a little squeaking all the way in here. Ugh. Alexa, what's the weather like? Alexa, what's the weather like? Alexa? Alexa? No, nothing. Okay, cool, fine. I didn't need anyone else's voice to keep me calm. I'm feeling real calm all on my own. I am so relaxed. I'm so relaxed. This is great. Bev? Bev, are you almost done in there? I think the bat's getting tired of flying around. It might land on my sheets or something. Think about that slimy bat claws on my pillow. Ew! Disgusting! I don't even want to think about it. I don't even want to think for a single second about it because it's just so gross. Bev? You out there? Bev! Bev? I am right here. Chill out, dude. Sorry, I just thought maybe the, the, the bat got you or something. A tiny bat is not going to kill me. At least not instantly. Uh, if it gives me rabies, I have like 24 hours to live or something like that. Anyways, I couldn't find anything particularly good, so I just got this pillowcase. I think you can probably work fine. Is that your own pillowcase? God, you're brave. I'm going in there now. I think this is the first time I've ever been invited into your bedroom. Uh, and hopefully it's not the last. <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah, great. Just get in there and kill it. Georgie hides while Bev enters his room. Suddenly, we hear more squeaking and a sudden shout. Bev dashes out and shuts the door. <sighs> oh, holy shit, that thing is huge! Did you get it? No, I didn't get it. The pillowcase is too small. I need something bigger. Uh, and I need something to knock it out to get it on the ground. A pillow? Probably. And maybe a garbage bag to hold it in. Uh, what in the world would you do without me, Georgie, baby? Die in 24 hours due to rabies? Yeah, probably. All right. How about you go get the pillow from my room? And I am going to make a cup of coffee. Coffee at 3 a.m. I'm thirsty. Might as well stay up now anyway. Georgie exit into Bev's room. Bev begins preparing a cup of coffee and then grabs a garbage bag. Hey, Georgie. I have a crush on you. I've had one for a while, really. I've just been meaning to tell you. For, like, four years. It's not my fault you can't take a fucking hint. What? Oh, nothing. Just the coffee must be messing with me, right? I'm just a flirty person, right? Always been that way. It's definitely not just you. Were you talking to the bat? Uh, yes, he's a real sweet talker. We were chatting about going to a bar later. What bar? Oh, it's well, the bar downtown. You would know it. You're making me jealous. Really? Oh, yeah, I'd kill to go on a date with a bat. And preferably one without rabies and also one without slimy wings. Oh, okay. Let's just get this over with then. Here's the pillow you requested. Thank you. Maybe when you've got it in there, I can ask it on a date. <laughs> Think I got a shot? I don't know. You okay? I'm fine. Let's just get this over with. I'm tired. All right, sure. 
Bev leaves the room. Squeaking can be heard, and then suddenly a thump noise, in which we hear the squeaking momentarily stop. And the wrinkling of the garbage bag. The squeaking then resumes. Do not this, Bev. Uh, catch that bat. Woo! Moral support. Mm. Bev re-enters the room. They hold a bat in the garbage bag, which continues to flap around. I got it. Oh, Jesus, would you look at that? You certainly got a bat in a garbage bag. Do you want to ask it on a date now? <laughs> Very funny. You should probably let it go now. Seriously, ask the bat on a date. I'm not joking. What? Bev, just take the bag outside. That squeaking is freaking me out. Ask it on a date, Georgie. Please. Okay. Christ. Will you go on a date with me, bat? The bat says yes. What time? I don't know. What, what, what are you doing? What time, Georgie? Jesus, Bev, you're scaring me. Give me a fucking time. Friday at seven. God, what is wrong with you? The bat will be there. Wait, Bev, what are you doing with that bat? I'm going to get it ready for its date on Friday. Bev, don't torture that poor creature. Just let it go. I'm not going to do that. I'm making you follow through with this. Bev, just let it go. It's gotten into you. That was just a stupid joke. I don't actually want to take a bat on a date. Shut up. Just shut up. Please just shut the fuck up. What is going on? Why are you freaking out? I am going back to bed. I'll be. The bat will be getting ready for its date on Friday. Good night. I am not going on a date with a bat. I said good night. Bev exits into the room with the bat, still squeaking inside the bag. What just happened? Georgie wanders to the coffee on the table. Uh, hey, Bev? You forgot your coffee. No response. I've got a date with a bat on Friday. That's fucking weird. Georgie stares into the coffee for a minute, takes a sip, and immediately spits it out. <laughs> he doesn't like coffee. Then he turns off the lights, and he heads to bed. Lights out. End of play. How many times do I have to explain it? No, no, I got it. Okay, good. I'm just a little worried. Oh my God. I'm serious, what if someone gets hurt? That's the point. Oh, no, I get it now. Yeah. Yeah. Are you cool with it? Do I have a choice? How many do we put in here? I don't know, um, not too many, because then it will get too heavy. You gotta find the sweet spot. Yeah. Right now, six seems to be working pretty good. Six? Okay. Holy crap, how many did you have in there? A lot, don't judge me. I mean, I hate to be judging you right now, but I am. Well, stop it. I mean, we're here to womp the guy, not tie him to the bottom of the lake. Wait. What? Why don't we just do that? Do what? Time to the bottom of the lake. Eh. Think about it. It would be so much easier. Yeah, but I mean, it's like a signature, you know? Are you a serial killer? What the fuck? I, like the pillow man, you know? You ever read that? Yeah! Have you? Of course. What was your favorite part? Anyway, my point is I want to keep it simple, straightforward. Uh-huh. So, what if we whack him with the pillow, he drops unconscious, right? You know, hopefully not too much blood, the whole deal. Then, we take him to the lake. 
tie the pillow around his ankle and drown him. Eh? Best of both worlds. I get my pillows and you get your leg. Okay, but why do we need the pillows? Hey, I don't ask you why you need that fucking gravy thing every time you sweat. It's my inhaler. Whatever. Jack, man, this pillow thing is stupid. Just let it go. It's only stupid because you're thinking it's stupid. I have never, ever in my life ever heard of someone doing a hit with some pillowcase full of rocks that still has the pillow in it. Well, you're weird. At least get rid of the pillow. No, that's the whole point. Oh my God, fine. It will work great. What? I don't have it. Don't you have it? No. Why don't no. you have it? Because I thought you had it. Oh my God, man, we're going to die. We're actually going to die. Relax, we'll be fine. No, we won't. When a man named Bubba Banks gives you a hit order at the threat of murder, you have to do the hit. Relax, he seemed nice enough. I'm sure he'll understand. No, you won't. Any man with a pinky ring is not stable. It's in their genes. Why are you hating on the pinky ring? Why would I not hate on the pinky ring? It's gross. You need a sense of fashion. Ugh, you need to remember where this address is. I never had the address. I never had it either. Do you at least know who we're killing tonight with this sack of rock pillows? This is so fucking stupid, man. We can't use pillows. We will use pillows. <clears throat> Wait, if we're using pillows, why don't we just suffocate him? Why put rocks in it? Oh, yeah. We could suffocate him. Thanks. That works so much better. This is the least confident I've felt in my entire life. So who's the guy? Who? The guy. What guy? The guy we have to fucking murder. Keep your voice down. Oh, my God. I'm going to suffocate you if you don't tell me who he is. So, Jack. Please tell me you at least know who we have to kill. I wasn't taking notes, I'm sorry. I can't believe this. Hey, at least I started out knowing we had to kill someone. What do you think a hit meant? Punching him and running? Yes, that's exactly what I thought. You're an idiot. Don't call me an idiot, you stupid, stinky, poopy head. Jack, hey, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Just because you're upset with me doesn't mean you get to call me names. I'm sorry, hey, hey, look at me. I'm sorry, pal. Here, have a tissue. Thanks. Are we good? Maybe. Okay. Do you understand why I'm upset though? No. Okay, well, Maybe we need to go over things real quick. We have to kill someone tonight. A man named Bubba Banks has threatened to murder us if we do not kill this guy. We know it has to happen at 10 p.m. That's the one thing we know, but we don't know who or where, and it's 9.45. So we need to figure this out very quickly or else Bubba Banks will kill us, okay? I still don't get why you're upset. Are you even listening to me? Am I a wall? Kind of. I, I can't. I'm, I'm just going to kill this guy myself. Jesus Christ. And you, you don't know anything? Mm. Wait. Hold on. Jack, what is this? An envelope. I can see that. It's addressed to someone at a certain address. No one we know of. Where did you get this from? Bubba gave it to me. Bubba Banks? Mm-hmm. He gave you this random letter? Yeah, he said tonight we needed to deliver the mail. Oh, shit, that's the guy. What's in the envelope? No, are we supposed to open it? I don't know. Oh, geez. Oh, my God. I said yes. Let's open it. I'm not opening this thing. What if, what if we can't? It's a letter. How weak are you? No, I mean, like, what if we aren't supposed to? Well, what if we are? You do it. Not No, not me. Why me? It's your idea. I'm not doing it. I'm not either. Well, one of us has to. What if we flip a coin? 
Tails, you open it. It's heads. You can't hide the coin. I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm not. No. It's heads. See? That's ridiculous. You could have just flipped it. Why would I do that? So you would win? But I did win. I don't need to win twice. Oh, my God. Fine. I'll open it. It's instructions on how to kill him. Your pillow thing isn't happening. What? That's what it says. Give me that. Bullshit. I don't know what to tell you. This is ridiculous. Well, get over it. What are you going to do? Leave a complaint? Yes. Okay. What's wrong? My head hurts. You want aspirin? I want to kill this guy. Jesus Christ. It... 952. We need to leave. Wait, let me write this email first. Do it in the car. Oh, God. Fine. Fine. <gasps>